You feel the engines shut down beneath you, and for the first time since launch, there are no alarms screaming in your ears, no fire licking the hull, and no immediate indication that you've made a catastrophic mistake. That alone feels suspicious. You step forward, boots pressing into alien ground, and for a brief, dangerous moment, everything feels fine. The horizon curves gently away from you. The sky glows with a warm amber light, and the air looks thick but calm, heavy without being violent, peaceful enough to lower your guard. Congratulations. You've landed on Kepler 22b, a planet 635 light years from Earth, orbiting a star so similar to our sun that astronomers once whispered about it like it was a second chance a world sitting neatly inside the habitable zone, where liquid water could exist if everything else lined up just right. This planet made headlines for one simple, terrifying reason. You might survive here, and that thought should scare you more than anything else. So keep your helmet on, stay close, and don't touch anything. Let's take the tour. Before we talk about the planet itself, let's acknowledge how absurd it is that you're standing here at all. Kepler-22b is 635 light years away, which means that even if your ship could cruise along at 20% the speed of light, the journey would still take more than 3,000 years, long enough for civilizations to rise, collapse, and be forgotten, for languages to die out, and for your Spotify playlists to become priceless archaeological artifacts. So yes, you cheated. Warp drives, space-time shortcuts, reality-bending technology that physics hasn't signed off on. However you arrived, the universe noticed. And physics, as a rule, doesn't forgive shortcuts. Keep that in mind as we continue, because this planet is about to collect its toll. All right, first stop on the surface tour. Look up. Kepler 22b orbits a G-type star, almost identical to our sun, just slightly smaller and cooler with a surface temperature of roughly 5,500 Kelvin. The light it casts feels familiar in a deeply unsettling way, warm and comforting enough to trick your brain into thinking you're home. That resemblance isn't an accident. Stars like this are stable, long-lived, and predictable, the kind that give planets billions of years to form oceans, complex chemistry, and maybe even life. For a while, astronomers thought this was the selling point. But here's the thing they learned too late. The star isn't the danger, the planet is. Let's keep moving, carefully. As you take a few steps forward, you start to notice it. Not all at once, not dramatically, but in the quiet complaints of your body as it adjusts to something it doesn't like. Kepler 22b is a super Earth, measuring about 2.1 times Earth's radius and carrying roughly nine times its mass which translates to gravity that's about 2.07 times stronger than what you evolved for. It's not enough to pin you to the ground or snap bones on contact. It's worse than that. Every movement costs more energy. Your legs fatigue faster, your lungs work harder to pull in each breath, and your heart begins renegotiating the workload like an employee who just realized the job description was a lie. Living here wouldn't kill you quickly. It would just wear you down until your body quietly gives up. Earth was hard-coded for you. This place absolutely was not. Next stop, the sky. Don't trust it. Up close, the atmosphere reveals itself as thick, hazy, and heavy. The kind of air that looks breathable from a distance, but starts to feel oppressive the longer you stare at it. Kepler 22b size strongly suggests a dense atmosphere, likely rich in hydrogen and helium gases common on larger planets, and catastrophically bad for human lungs. There may be no oxygen at all. Or worse, oxygen mixed with toxic compounds that turn every breath into a chemical gamble. Even if the composition didn't kill you, the pressure alone might. On a super-Earth like this, atmospheric pressure could be far higher than Earth's. And pressure doesn't announce itself with pain or panic. It waits. It lets you breathe wrong once. And then your lungs collapse from barotrauma, the same silent failure that kills deep-sea divers when pressure changes faster than biology can cope. You wouldn't scream. You'd just stop. Let's head toward the surface, or what passes for one. Kepler-22b is widely believed to be an ocean world, potentially covered entirely in water, 
stretching endlessly in every direction, with no continents, no shorelines, and no escape. At first, that sounds promising. Then scale ruins everything. With gravity this strong and an atmosphere this thick, pressure beneath the surface would skyrocket almost immediately. Water would stop behaving like water, transforming into supercritical fluid. A state where it's neither liquid nor gas, and nothing that swims, drinks, or breathes survives for long. You can't swim in it. You can't drink it. And if it's laced with heavy metals or acids, even touching it could be fatal. This ocean doesn't nurture life. It sterilizes it. Now for the statistic everyone loves to quote. On paper, Kepler 22b's equilibrium temperature sits at around 22 degrees Celsius. Room temperature, the kind that makes headlines and fuels hope. It's also completely misleading. If the atmosphere is as thick as we suspect, heat gets trapped efficiently, wrapping the planet in a thermal blanket that steadily raises surface temperatures. Water evaporates, greenhouse effects spiral, and the climate becomes wildly unstable. You don't get a paradise. You get exoplanet Venus, scorching heat during the day, brutal cold if atmospheric circulation fails at night and violent storms as the planet desperately tries to move heat around. Kepler-22b can't decide whether to cook you or freeze you, so it compromises badly. Pause here, listen, no birds, no insects, no movement at all. Kepler-22b has existed for billions of years, which means if life ever had a fair chance to develop here, it had time, plenty of it. And yet, your instruments detect nothing resembling complex ecosystems. No forests, no reefs, no signs that this world ever learned how to hold on to life for long. Maybe microbial life exists beneath the surface. Maybe it doesn't. Either way, the message is clear. If life ever tried here, this planet won. The tour ends the same way most bad ideas do, with exhaustion. Gravity has been quietly draining you since the moment you arrive, and eventually your body makes a decision before your brain can object. You sit down, just for a moment, just to rest, just to breathe. That's when the pressure shift hits. Your lungs compress, air moves where it shouldn't, and one internal system after another begins failing as your body realizes it made a catastrophic assumption about alien atmospheres. There's no dramatic explosion, no final scream, just biology losing an argument with physics. Kepler, 22b never attacks you. It simply lets you exist long enough to think you're safe, and then reminds you why you aren't. As your vision fades, one thought finally settles in. Kepler 22b wasn't hostile. It was honest. Earth spoiled you. It gave you breathable air, manageable gravity, friendly water, and a magnetic field that quietly saved your life every single day without asking for credit. Kepler 22b did none of that. It didn't hate you. It didn't want you gone. It simply never needed you. The universe is full of planets that almost work. Worlds that look perfect from far away, promise hope, and then quietly erase you the moment you arrive. You didn't find Earth 2.0. You found proof that Earth was a miracle. And miracles don't repeat themselves.